I'm Fox. Couch guy. You're watching the Two Smart Guys show, where every week we bring you the latest and greatest in tech news, mods, hacks, and fun things. Fun things. And this is a request episode, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So last last episode, I explained my little project of getting more electricity into the studio so I could charge my Volt faster, which is a a plug-in electric hybrid type car. And there was a lot of questions, so I thought I'd, I'd post this episode to explain more about electric cars. So this is my electric car 101 episode. <laughs> what you need to know when thinking about electric cars or responding to what you think you know about electric cars. Exactly, because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of common misconceptions about electric vehicles. Um, mainly, mainly, mainly people were thinking that they are golf carts. <laughs> And uh, that's not the case, especially when, you know, some of the larger ones cost over $100,000. They, yeah. they are no longer golf carts. You can't be golf carts. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, why electric car? Why would you, why would you want to get an electric car versus a regular car? Um, if you haven't noticed, the gas prices over the years, they keep going up and up. And, you know, depending on who you talk to, we may run out of gas at some point in our kids lifetimes maybe who knows <laughs> i doubt it if you've ever uh seen what's inside of north dakota but yeah yeah anyways it's, it's not an unlimited resource it's, gonna go up. it's still gonna go up in price it doesn't yeah. matter what happens yeah. price so, gas will continue to go up it's not a renewable resource um so there's there's that end of it and there's also pollution clean energy blah 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 um my my standpoint is on my volt what i have have is a car that can go electric for 40 miles, and it costs here in Wyoming less than $1 to charge. So I can go also 40 miles on a gallon of gas, which costs about three fifty. So if you look at it that way, it's like the third the cost to drive in electric mode. So it, yeah. it makes sense, you know, for cost savings wise. So when you're looking at electric vehicles, I've got, I think, like five or six of them here. They're kind of like the most popular all electric vehicles. There's things you need to look for, and one is the the MPGE, which is the the electric equivalent of miles per gallon, because there's no gallon, there's no gas. How do you measure a gallon <laughs> in battery mileage? Yeah, exactly. And I, I put in the show notes the wiki article that explains it, and it's really long. <laughs> yeah, it's for really smart people. Yeah, so they take the national average of gasoline for the year, and the national average of electricity, and then they they figure out you know, what the cost equivalent is of each, and they come up with this number. And it's usually about two to three times more than the gas equivalent. So, like, the Volt, um, it's got an MPGE of 98 miles per gallon, but when it's running on gasoline mode, I think it's 35 miles per gallon, which... So, if the price of electricity shot up tomorrow, then that rate would go down. So if the cost of electricity goes up, your MPGE goes down. So if you want to have your MPGE go through the roof, the simple, easiest way to do it, frankly, is if you're charging your car off of solar panels that you already own, and you're not paying an electric bill, your MPGE is extremely high. Now, none of us really have that, but that's just why it's variable. It's not the same thing as gasoline, which you pump in hydrocarbon and you get back a gallon of worth of mileage. Yeah, so like um, the, the Tesla, the Tesla cars, the Model S, they kind of say, well, you know, you're buying this car that costs fifty to $100,000, we'll let you charge it for free. So they set up solar chargers, and I showed it in the last episode on the screen. They're, they're planning on putting them everywhere across the nation, like every major city, so you could theoretically drive from one city to the next, get a free charge, and keep going. In theory. Wow. Which is a cool project. Hope it works yeah. out. <laughs> Only catch is, it, it only works for Teslas. I mean, they only the no, plug. No, no, like how long will they allow you to do it? Like, if you have that car today, in 10 years, if you still have that car, they're going to let you charge for free. That's what they say. They say as long as you have a Tesla car, the problem is they'll be full. You know, you, you have to wait. Yeah. Which I, I see is an issue. But any, anyway, so that's that's the MPGE. And uh, so there's there's some popular cars out. There's the Tesla Roadster, which was a, a car priced at a modest hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I think <laughs> we need to worry about 
vehicles that we can afford. <laughs> so we're talking about, was it Nissan's Leaf? Yeah, so the Nissan Leaf's probably the most affordable of the bunch. It's around yeah. um, 30000 And you can get the tax credit if you make the right kind of money and the math works out right of about 7500 So it is by far the most affordable it's electric car. It's probably also the, the wimpiest of the and ones. the ugliest. <laughs> And the Just mostly because between it and the Prius, it's kind of a competition between who has kind of the ugly slash wimpiest car. <laughs> but if you're a city driver and you're just mostly doing that, they're probably the best vehicle for you. Because then you can pay less up front, get the same usage, and not really you know have that extra you know tariff that seems to be on all electric vehicles. Yeah, so we're looking at the MPGE, so you want to look at those. And right now, on the like uh, the six cars that I have listed, they're all pretty similar. They're all between um, 95 and 100, 100. 100 MPGE. So that's pretty straightforward. Three times the best vehicle you can think of. Yeah, so they're, 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 they're pretty good. And the, the next thing you want to look at is range. If you're going in all-electric, you want to make sure it can get you where you want to go and back. And then you yeah. want to account for weather. Like I had mentioned in the previous episode, your driving habits and how comfortable you want to be, how cold or warm you want to be, could and, theoretically could range in half. if you have available plug-in at work, if you have available plug-in at work, you could drive 30 miles to work in a Volt, plug it in, and by the end of your day, you can drive at home on electric again and not have a problem. Right, right. So um, the Volt, or actually the Prius plug-in has the smallest amount of range because the Prius plug-in is actually a hybrid with a larger battery. So they, they only have big it enough... It the same kind of Prius technology. Yeah. So hand-in-hand hand with the range, you also look at the, the battery in kilowatt hours and how many it can hold. And the smallest battery in the smallest range is the Prius plug-in. It's got um, it's a 4.4 kilowatt battery, and it can only go about 11 miles in electric-only mode. Yeah. And then there's the Volt, which can go... Um, 40. 40. Roughly. Right, yeah, right around 40. Some people get as many as 50, and me in the winter is getting closer to the 20 range, but that, that varies a lot. Um, but like the, the advantages of, of the Volt, which is an electric car with a gas generator, is you can go an additional 300 miles on a tank of gas and then just put more gas in it. Keep going. I've gone all the way down to Arizona, which is 1,000 miles in a day. So you can do that with a Volt. Uh, the pr plug in Prius, you can also do that with. Um, the Leaf, not so much. <laughs> no. Sorry, the Leaf is a commuter car only. You got, you probably got 75 miles at your best day. Yeah, they do have, um, quick chargers, the, the DC, DC level threes, where you can get to a larger city that has one of those, charge up in a half hour and keep going another, you know, 70 miles. But, but in reality, the Leaf was designed for the commuter. Yeah, that's it's not... It's designed to... Cut pollution during stop and go traffic, and the fact that you can go, you know, the 20 miles you go to work or wherever you're going at home, and a little putzing around between and not run out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. You could pay a couple hundred dollars to lease a, a leaf and then just pay for the electricity to charge it. You'll never have a gas bill. Yeah. It, it, in theory, it sounds really cool. Uh, Ford Focus, um, they've got an electric version of that, and it's pretty, pretty similar to the Leaf, except for it costs about $10,000 more. Yeah. And it doesn't look as ugly. Uh, but it, what they do is they just toss a big battery in the trunk, so you lose a lot of trunk space. Not, not designed as an electric vehicle from the get-go. No. I'd say the best electric vehicle, and it was like the car of the year this year, was the Tesla S. You probably hear a lot about it in the news. But also the most expensive of right. all the vehicles that we talk about they're, today. They're smart, though, because they've got a price uh, starting at 52 and then you get the tax rebate. So you can almost afford it, uh, depending on how much you make. It depends on what your class is. But yeah, uh, yeah. So you can get the low-end version of it, and you, know, you can have a really nice car compared to the Leaf, but it costs still twice as much. Or you can go the high end, and that's where you get the range. And that—that that is the the vehicle. The whole bed of the vehicle is a battery, and it has up to three hundred miles on electric range. But the, but to get that kind of range, you have to pay for the top end one. Yeah. So it's you pay for the special battery. Yeah, yeah. So in reality, what we're trying to say is that the um, electric cars aren't just golf carts anymore. But it's a little more complicated than just hopping on the you know car dealer's lot and saying, ah, I'll take the blue one. 
because you need to do a little more homework than you would on a normal vehicle just because of range and how that fits in your lifestyle. Right. Um, and also, um, people are worried about power. They're like, well, these things are tiny. They don't go very fast. They, they take a long time to get up to speed. That's not necessarily true anymore. Uh, a lot of these vehicles, like the Tesla Roadster is one of the fastest cars out there. And it's uh, pure electric. It could go uh, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. And even, even the Volt, it's one of the slower electric vehicles, but it, it does it in uh, around 8 seconds. The Tesla S, 4.4 seconds. The Leaf, 7 seconds. The really interesting thing about electric vehicles is the fact that they have instant torque. So that means that they can go, like, as soon as you put the pedal to the metal, it's at 100% full speed of the, uh, the engine, or the motor, the electric motor. So your 0 to 30 is like instantaneous, so like as soon as you get it down there, you're going um, the, full, uh, the full speed. So the 0 to 30 is just a second or two. And then your 0 to 60 takes a little longer, depending on how expensive an electric vehicle you have. And uh, the way the Volt works, it has, and I think some of the, the other vehicles, they have mountain modes, so that they can store up extra battery capacity for when you're going up mountains. So you can go 100 miles per hour. Uh, the top speeds of these vehicles, Tesla S, I think, is 130 miles an hour. Um, my Volt's limited to 100. It, it just physically won't let you go higher than that. It stops. It, it could go faster. They just don't let you. <laughs> I think the Leaf and the Focus go around 80 top speed. So, the, you know, that's one of the other things to look for. You, you, you put the pedal on the metal, that thing just goes at its full speed. Or the, it, it's... It's fun to drive, it's neat, it's zippy, it's cool. So that's my summary, that's 101 on electric cars. It covers kind of all the, the basics to look for when you're, when you're kind of contemplating whether or not you should buy an electric car if it fits your lifestyle. Um, I say go test drive one, they're very cool um, to drive. They, they feel different than anything you've tried. I cars, but they suck because of this. Um, leave your comments below what you think. Um, if you think the electric cars are, are the future or if that they're just a fad or they're too expensive. Or <laughs> what What are your thoughts? Um, I personally like them. I recently also got a hybrid truck for my work, so I'm I'm going green ish. <laughs> Greenish. I like that. <laughs> Greenish, bluish. So please um, subscribe to the feed. We do shows every week. Uh, Monday we try and put out a new show. We try and do live shows on Wednesdays around eight thirty Mountain Time. When we can do it. TwoSmartGuys.com slash live. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Walking Crow and uh, at Tommy5C. At Tommy5C on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. And that's about as far as I'll let you go. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. This has been Two, Two Smart, Smart Guys, Guys production. production.